What's up, nature freaks? What's going on? Dave and Jeremy back in the desert. And if you guys are wondering why we're sitting under this shady tree, it's because we prefer to stay cool, unlike the animal that we're highlighting that loves the heat. Yeah, so today we're gonna be highlighting the chuckwalla lizard. Now this is extremely underrated lizard in our opinion. I mean, they are cool lizards, despite <laughs> loving extreme heat. So these guys are sun worshipers. Uh, we're gonna try and find them out and about on top of the rocks, which is crazy because we're gonna be seeing triple digits today in the desert. Well, it's time to get out of the comfort of the shade and go hike in this heat and join those chuckwallas. A little chuckwalla fun in the sun. Chuck, chuck. <laughs> Nature in your face! Chuckwallas have a wide range throughout southwestern Arizona. They inhabit the Sonoran, Mojave, and Great Basin Desert scrubland, and they thrive in the mountainous areas where the habitat consists of rocky outcroppings and large boulder piles, providing the lizards with plenty of crevices to escape predators, as well as the opportunity to bask during the day. Hiking up to the higher elevations during the hottest part of the day is not ideal for us, but chuckwallas favor these conditions, and it also coincides with their breeding season. So we gathered our gear along with plenty of water and headed out in search of the chuckwalla. All right, so we hiked and we have made it to the perfect chuckwalla location. Dave, how can we be sure this is the right location? Easy. First of all, if you look all around us, there's foliage. This is the type of stuff that the chuckwallas love to munch on all day. Also, we have these rocks and best part of it is we have chuck wallas. Well, well there you have it. <laughs> yeah, so we were hiking and we saw a couple chuck wallas basking on this rock. They have now shot right underneath us in this crack and crevice. Now think about this for a second. It is 99, no, it's 100 degrees now according to my watch. Wow. And to touch these rocks, it is way too hot. All right, like it came out of the oven. They're sitting on here basking ambient temperature of 100 and then on these blazing hot rocks. That's insane. Gotta be a, at least 110 on the rocks, easily. Yeah. yeah, now these chuckwallas are so physically close to us, we can put our hands under here and literally touch them. What a waste of time. They have, obviously, they wedge themselves in the rocks so tight, there's no way we're gonna get them out. So like we mentioned earlier, we're gonna set up the Osmo cam here. We're gonna walk away and hopefully within, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, these things will come hopefully. out. Yeah, we'll put some foliage <laughs> up there, maybe get them eating. Just try to get them in action. Yeah, all right, so we'll see you guys in a few minutes. The female was the first to emerge. Quickly the male followed her. Once she determined that the coast was all clear, ladies first, you know. Using his head bobbing, he quickly asserted his male dominance as he shoved the female back as if to say, go make me a sandwich. <laughs> All right, as it turns out, it was not two females in the crevice. It was a male and a female. Now, the reason we figured that out is the male was shedding his skin, and the shed skin is more of a whitish gray color, making it appear as if the tail was the same color as the females. But once it whipped around, we could easily identify it as a male. Now, the only reason there would be a male in there with a female is they are going to breed, which is really, really exciting that we were able to see that. We didn't actually see him breeding, but we did see some interaction between the male and the female, the male actually pursuing the female. A really awesome thing to be able to witness here in the desert. The male was not happy at all about the camera and his territory, and he continued to head bob to show his dominance. He can easily be identified with the solid black body and that bright orange tail. The female, on the other hand, loved the camera and seemed super curious. The females are easily identified. Statewide, they are gray-brown with faint modeling or crosswaters. They also have the yellowish to light gray tail.
Oh, we got like the like male chuck walla coming out of the hole right in front of us as if it doesn't really care that we're here watching it. <laughs> That's kind of unusual in and of itself. He's trying to get to his girlfriend, dude. Right? Yeah, when there's a female involved, all bets are off, man. That's right. He's going to be a little daredevil now. Here he goes. Look at him. Look at him. Here he comes. We're not trying to chuck block here. <laughs> all right, now you can see that orange tail right where that shed is coming off. That's how you know it's a male. And, of course, the dark body. The male eventually built up enough courage to make his way out from the crevice and up the side of the rock face, where he began bobbing his head and proudly showing off that bright orange tail. The locality where we filmed the orange tail Chuck Wallace is the only place on the planet where this color morph can be found. All right, Jeremy's gonna attempt to if catch I, the I female. Oh, she gone. Oh, she gone. Well, she's still oh, there. there. You'll be able to grab her, but will you be able to get her out? Oh no, no she forget just, I just heard her, <laughs> so... Alright, forget it. So this is funny, <clears throat> when I went to uh, get closer to get her, I could hear this like, <sighs> like a rough sandpaper, <laughs> sand. and, and their scales are super rough, and that's what they do, they jam their body in there, and those rough scales grab top, bottom, all the way around. If Even if I grabbed her tail like a predator and I tried to yank her out, not happening. She's inflated like a balloon. Those rough scales are gripped around those rocks. I'm going to eventually break her tail and she actually has a nub on the end of her tail where something probably tried to grab her tail and it broke off. So, yep. I mean, um, just a super incredible way to survive out here in the desert. As we were heading out of the mountains, we noticed a large male looking down at us as if to say, catch me if you can. Boom! Nice snag, man. Yep, that was a complete team effort. Yeah, I'm glad you caught this. That's a beautiful lizard. Yeah, I love the tri-colors. It's got the banana tail, the orange back, and the black limbs. That's really incredible. I think everybody should uh, see a chuck wallet before they die. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> yeah, look how big this one is. It's the biggest one we've ever caught. And this, I mean, the fact that he gets to live up here on this mountaintop, yeah, what I'm an jealous. Yeah, awesome view. Right? A little mountain casa view here. That's pretty sweet. Super cool. Well, I'm not going to lie to you guys. We are beat. We just expended all of our energy here in the midday chasing down these chuck walls, but it was well worth it. We were able to get some epic shots of these chuck walls in action. That's right, and we are pretty stoked here, but we gotta get out of here. Literally, it's hotter. <laughs> Two squirrels frying acorns in a wool sock. I think we're gonna pass out. Yeah, so after <laughs> our mile walk back to the car, we're gonna hit the closest 7-Eleven and we're gonna buy two of the giant big gulps, the biggest ones we can find. Big gulps, huh? That's right. All well, right. See you later.